Company. The main freight Southland Rally attracted 73 cars, plenty of fans and the country's top drivers. Christchurch's Brian Stokes was seated third in his Ford Escort Cosworth. The Bombay boy, Barry Sexton, drives one of the four top Subaru Legacies, who are all chasing Wellington's Joe McAndrew, who leads the series after back-to-back -back wins in Northland and Manawatu. But the man under pressure is Auckland's Neil Allport, who gets some tips on how to finish a rally from Invercargill's new mayor, Tim Shadbolt. After failing to finish the first two rounds, that's exactly what Allport and co-driver Jim Robb are after. Good luck and good speed around the rolling plains and foothills of the Deep South. From the start at 8 in the morning till the finish 12 and a half hours later, the rally will cover 250 kilometres within 12 special stages over a wide variety of roads. That variety gives the drivers and crews a good shakedown for the Rothmans rally next month. Stage one in the Longwood Forest, and Allport goes all out in his attempt to defend his national title. The Mazda GTR has a new engine since Manawatu, but testing has been very limited. The question remains, is it good enough to give Allport his first points in the three sport national champs? Allport sets fastest time on the 15 kilometer stage, but behind him by only one second, Southland title holder Joe McAndrew in the Subaru Legacy. Stage two west of Otautau was a deer race for Allport as he avoids some of the local inhabitants. Remember, these national rounds are blind rallies with no pace notes allowed, and it shows great skill to drive this fast, not knowing what's over the next hill or when it's time to get some fresh air. Next driver through was Brian Stokes, but where's McAndrew? Well, Joe had a bank at speed and suffered steering damage. Now, the rules say that a driver can get outside assistance if his car is a danger to other competitors. But unluckily for the Wellington Speedster, the tow doesn't help and his rally is over. Allport really winds it up in stage three to move more than two minutes ahead of the field. And that's a good sign, as he hasn't got past stage two in the other round so far. But he can't relax, though, as some of the locals don't give a toss about who he is or where he is as long as he stays out of their way. Rangiora's John Silcock and his Mazda 323 took fourth best time here. An excellent effort. But putting a little too much effort was Stuart Weaver in the Celica. The 28-year-old automotive engineer won the Rothmans Award last year, but this time has to settle for a parking award. car was stuck in a log and that's where it stayed. Stage four west of Tuatapuri and Brian Stokes climbs back from fourth overall after finishing stage three with no front wheel drive. Second and third the Subarus of Sexton and Watkins match times on the stage. No one could get close to Walford though who steadily increased his lead to nearly three minutes But it wasn't all plain sailing. Yeah, we've had a few little problems of our own. You know, we had a bent the steering in stage two, and then stage three we lost a power steering valve and a rear drive shaft boot. So, fighting it, you know, not over yet. Oh, we were certainly. Um, I felt doing a lot better on the one before, but then the front dip broke. So, uh, you know, we can't quite win yet, but it's getting better. South of Tuatapiri, and Allport keeps up the pace, but perhaps not the concentration. His driving style is what the fans like to see, and he still shared best time on stage five with Brian Stokes. The 
Subaru battled for second and third gained interest as Brian Watkins took second place overall from Barry Sexton. Brian Stokes lost another 30 seconds in stage six with diff trouble. But when Allport lost some time with this indiscretion, Stokes matched his stage seven time. 180 degree right around this people here. Stage 8 was 13 k's around Willander Downs. At the end, Allport led Sexton by nearly four and a half minutes. Avondale was the last daylight stage and the fastest of the rally. 7,300 revs in 7th gear meant 145 miles an hour. The best stage time in 2nd place overall for Stokes. The night stages around Benmore and Dunsdale saw Brian Stokes first lose his 2nd place to Barry Sexton and then on the final stage caught himself back for 2nd overall. The Grand Hotel in Invercargill was buzzing as Neil Allport claimed his bubbly and more importantly 30 points in the championship. Brian Stokes, who had gone from second to fourth and back to second, now seems to have the measure of his Cosworth. First in group end was Brian Watkin after a very consistent drive. First Southlander was Ross Mackay, seventh overall. So after three rounds of the three sport national rally champs, Joe McAndrew leads with 60 points from Brian Watkin and Brian Stokes. In the Rothmans Challenge, Paddy Davidson leads the North Island and Ross Mackay is ahead for the South Island. Robbie Lester leads the Rothmans Scholarship comfortably. The Three Sport Rally Championship was proudly presented by... You can join us, so uh, look forward to it. Well, welcome back to Mobile Sport. Now, last week, while the All Blacks were dealing to the Lions, some of the fastest drivers in the country were dealing to the back roads in Griswiley country. It was round four of the Three Sport Rally Champs, the main freight rally of Canterbury. The Three Sport Rally Championship is proudly presented by Verbatim, New Zealand's leading computer media company. Fourth round of the three sport national rally championships began at the terribly civilised time of 7.30 on a beautiful clear Christchurch morning. A dawn that saw Neil Allport looking very serious. He had to win today a piece to retain any chance of hanging on to his national title after two DNFs in the first two rounds. He came back strongly to win the rally of Southland though but is still only eight on the points table. The rally starts from Christchurch and travels west to five public road stages south of Waddington. A regroup after stage five there, then sends a reordered field out to the five afternoon stages in the Ashley Forest. Wellington's Joe McAndrew, seated number two, leads the 1993 Three Sport Championship by six points from Brian Watkin after winning the first two rounds, but then crashed out of round three. McAndrew only has to finish in the top few here and in the Rothmans International next month to take the title. Local Canterbury dairy farmer Brian Stokes is only eight points behind McAndrew and has shown glimpses of the brilliant form he's capable of in the previous rounds. Allport began well by taking the first short stage by eight seconds. Seconds here on stage two to Stokes. And another two seconds on the zigzag stage three. Stage four was cancelled. There's a good kilometre of ice through stage four, um, and so for, therefore has made the decision to cancel that stage. By the time stage five was complete through Pig Saddle Road, Allport had a solid, if not comfortable, 20 seconds lead. Joe McAndrew started cautiously in stage one, finishing just one second in front of Stokes, but nine seconds behind Allport. The big Subaru looked and sounded good though, and McAndrew was a close third on stage two, just two seconds behind Allport. On stage three, there was a spin, and Joe could only manage fifth equal. With no stage four, it was straight on to stage five, and disaster. Finishing 33rd on the stage, 
he found himself at 17th place and nearly two minutes behind the leader and finally passed by Stokes. Yeah, we've all come down into a bit of an icy mud corner there and um, it slid wide and hit the berm and it must have blew the air out of the tyre, so we had to drive three quarters of the stage for the flat tyre rather than changing. Brian Stokes, however, got to the surface after stage five in second place, but with a major psychological victory. Well, the biggest problem has been getting it into first gear and uh, in here you've got to actually lift this, lift the lock out to be able to put it into first gear and then swing it over and uh, in the heat of the moment when you're coming down to a corner it, you've really got to think about it. We actually tried taking the lock out, out on a few rallies so that you could just swing it straight into first gear and uh, we blew up three front differentials doing that because I, I changed from fourth gear to first gear instead of fourth to third. You Going know. into a very tight hairpin, uh, yeah, very well, quick. <laughs> you can imagine 120 k's putting your car into first gear. <laughs> she didn't like it. So uh, I'm really thrilled that in the last special stage we, uh, we managed to get it in a, for the first time on a, on a hairpin bend, so it was, it was great. After coming third in stage one, he blasted through the field to win stages two and three. And if he hadn't been slowed by the crippled Subaru of Macandro on stage five, he may have taken that one too. One of the big movers up to stage five was second place getter from the Manawa two rally, Bruce Herbert. Although seated at number 14, he was up to fourth place and threatened to chip away at the 30-second gap to Stokes. His main rival in the North Island section of the Rothmans Challenge, the Potokies Paddy Davidson, though, also put in some very fast stages to come from number 16 to fifth. Chris Joblin started well in the new Evolution model of the Mitsubishi Lancer RS, but after stage four, noticed something was wrong. The engine started missing and it developed an intermittent miss in the touring stage and by the time we got to our service crew the engine developed quite a knock and at that point we decided there was no point in carrying on. Stage 6 into the back of the Ashley Forest was much more challenging than expected. lost 48 seconds here to a hard charging McAndrew, but responded by taking the next three stages convincingly. Ah, oh, shit. No, no, it's all right. Lucky there. Thought it was the road was going the other way. He had a spin in stage 10. and managed only fifth fastest time. His total though was exactly two minutes up on McAndrew. The series leader started stage six two minutes down and attacked with vengeance. The big Subaru seemed impervious to the ice and snow and Smoke and Joe leapt from 17th to second. Joe took out stage 10 and capped off a remarkable comeback to finish second overall and consolidate his lead at the top of the table. Brian Stokes had a disastrous stage six with a big spin and brake problems and could finish only 10th on the stage. A solid effort through the final four forest stages, picking up two seconds and two thirds, allowed a good third place finish for the main freight Canterbury Rally and second for the championship. Barry Sexton had battled all day in the verbatim Subaru and looked like finishing strongly. A spin in stage seven though meant the final gap of 51 seconds was too much to pull back from Stokes. Tony. Brian Watkin took through Ben by 49 seconds from the Will and Heather Orr Subaru and took fifth overall. Young flyer Greg Graham, son of Neil Graham, whose company Main Freight has been a long time supporter of rallying, was pleased with his result and is now sixth overall and looking forward to the Rothmans next month. I hope to finish high, um, get some good points for Junior Championship and hopefully group in and um, just clean run. The Rothmans Rally Challenge for the North Island was a battle right down to the final stage when Bruce Herbert and his Gallant VR4 took the lead and the $10,000 supported entry into the Rothmans International Rally next month. Paddy Davidson, though, had proved his Nissan Pulsar was very competitive, 
by finishing just 11 seconds behind. And even though he beat Herbert on five of the 10 stages, he missed out by just six points. The South Island section was also decided on the final stage, when John Silcox spun, and Ashton Wood picked up the award by just two points. The Rothman Scholarship for new drivers went to Robert Lester, who, although driving for less than a year, can now look forward to a full entry into the Rothmans Rally in August next month. So the main freight Canterbury Rally was won by Neil Allport in the Mazda, Joe McAndrew was second in the Subaru, while the local man, Brian Stokes, third in the Ford Escort. It now means after four rounds of the three-sport championship and going into the final round, the Rockman's International Rally next month, Joe McAndrew leads the series with 86 points from Brian Stokes in second on 75, with Brian Watkin third on 72, but first in Group N. Barry Sexton has 69, while defending champion Neil Allport rounds out the top five with 60 points.
What do you see? I'm always supposed to be filming Ross. The works cars that that intercooler is laying back, mm -hmm. so you move back and laying back, and um, and you have your, you do away with that restriction on there, so mm -hmm. you, you have your intake coming out the other side. Yep, the other side here. So you just tip that back and what take that down? Yeah, well that's what you have to come out here. So you mm -hmm. go to the gas in front of it. Yeah. Just screw it. Straight, straight in. Yeah. Put your water right, and you're away, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 